What's going on, everybody? Um, what better way to chronicle my descent into madness than to play a really awful game that shows up on every one of these channels? It's like a rite of passage for modern-day uh, uh, YouTube gaming channels is to play Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. And I think what I, <laughs> what I find interesting about this game, and the reason I find it still worth playing, um, is because, yes, it's an awful game, but I don't think Bennett Foddy um, is an is... Uh, you know, a crazy person. I think he's got a lot of really brilliant ideas when it comes to gaming and game design. <coughs> and he talks about a lot of that um, in this game. And because of that, I do want to kind of experience outside of, uh, you know, the, the typical memory. Hold on, let's make myself a little smaller here. I don't want you to miss out on even a second of the Bennett Foddy. Version 1.6, by the way. You can't, you can't see it because it's behind my head. There we go. Ah, he emerges. All right, and we are in. Okay. So it has been a bit. Again, this is not my first time playing this game. I, I was never able to get super far in it. Um, and I think, believe it or not, uh, I think I need to bring the quality down in order to make sure it's it's as responsive as possible, which is just heartbreaking because <laughs> it's not a great looking game. Let's just make it bad because why not? Yeah, I can I can see it's way more responsive now. I don't have the audio off, do I? Subtitles are on. Yeah, okay. Mm, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Up and over. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Up and over. Here we go. Alright, so let's talk about this a little bit. First of all, how I... Okay. Jeez. I'll understand if you have to take a break in any way. Just find a safe place to stop and click again. Don't worry. I'll save your progress always. Even your mistakes. This game is a homage to a pre-game that came out in 2010 titled Sexy Hiker. The author of that game was Jazzo, a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B-games. And B-games are rough assemblages of found objects. The designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. I love this. In a certain way, Sexy Hiking is the perfect embodiment of open games. It's built almost entirely out of found and recycled and it's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. And that act of climbing, in the digital world or in real life, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavor. No amount of forward progress is guaranteed. Some cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly, in danger of falling and losing everything. Anyway, when you start Sexy Hiking, standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. Prod and poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength, trying to find a way up and over. And there's a sense of truth in that lack of confidence. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them, once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. 
that sense, every pixelated obstacle in Sexy Hiking is real. Give him a second to see if he's not done. I, I, I like that bit. Like, because I can't get very far in this game, like, I, I wished, I remember my original experience wishing he would come back and tell me more about game design because that that I found more interesting than the man in the pot and you know just a sort of uh meme it up the hill um to the point where I actually found sexy hiking the game he was talking about and I downloaded it and the thing about sexy hiking is that I could not even get started in that game just like he was talking about like in this game I can't be I'm, I'm not successful at it but there's a difference between not being successful, you know, uh, like not being able to beat a game or get very far in it, and not even able to really play. Like he talked, I can't remember what the deal was. Like he talks about um, there being a tree that most people can't get past or something, and I think that was the case for me. I still have it in my freeware folder uh, on my hard drive, but I haven't loaded it up since I downloaded it. All right, um, off we go. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. There we go. The obstacles in sexy hiking are in real game, and that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jazzero intended to make it frustrating. The frustration is just essential to the act of playing, and it's authentic to the process of building a game track. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this mission. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past a new obstacle was my fault as a player rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb them, and it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something new. Oh, is my phone going on? Video game world, you're building with ideas, and that can be like working with quicksand cement. You mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with, and in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can change the world, not without breaking it into pieces. This, I think, he, I think he's spot on about this. Hmm. Mm. All right, up we go, up the mountain, friends. Up we go, up the mountain, friends, with no no background animations at all, because we're running a GTX 750 Ti, and we have to play most games in potato mode. All right, this hook, this is our way up, woo. Can't give it too much on that second one, because otherwise you'll go up and over. Up, up. Right, so let's talk about how I actually came across this game for the first time. So this was another one about work. Um, I worked with a guy who uh, had a Steam account. He's the only person from work that I think I've ever shared my Steam account with. <laughs> and one day, uh, we got lunch. And he didn't have any money. He was like, so I was like, yeah, I got you. He, or like he had a credit card or some, some For some reason, I had the goods, and I took care of him for lunch one day. And he was like, I'll get you back, man. Uh, so I was like, yeah, it's cool. Don't worry about it. It was like 10 bucks or something. Um, and, you know, a few days went by, and he was like, you remember that time you got me lunch? Um, I wanted to get you something back for it, so I got you a Steam game. And this was the game. <laughs> um, and I would joke that... say I would joke but I got ripped off I bought this dude like a German sausage or something <laughs> and I got getting over it with Bennett Foddy uh, and I still think about that whenever I come across this game mm. ridiculous looking I, I don't know how this began well actually I take it back I was gonna say I don't know how this became as popular as it did and I do know how it became as popular as it did, and I think that's because PewDiePie played it. 
Uh, and up. Let's try this again. And up. I don't... Uh, I don't know. I just, I just didn't get... I didn't get as angry at this game, I think, as you're supposed to. I got a little angry. I did rage quit. I guess that, that, that did happen. At one point, I was like, you know, I think I had enough. And then I just uninstalled it, and that was it. But I don't see the people, like, crying and screaming and stuff. I think that's all just theatrics. It's either theatrics or somebody needs to call a therapist, like for Rizzle, you know? Yeah, there we go. It's okay. <clears throat> I like the music. This is the loss of the progress is the point of the game. When you're going up successfully, you're not experiencing the game the way it was intended. You were intended to drop to the bottom and and feel the sensation of all of your time leading up to that moment feeling like it's wasted that's what i think this game is about it's not about the mountain and it's not about the cl it's not really about the climb it's about the fall Ugh. you think about it he's got all these pre-rendered materials that he uses um you know from what do you say the unity store or something like that and so he, it, clearly he didn't spend a ton of time on that, but there's a lot of uh, event triggers associated with falling. Like if you fall far enough, it'll play certain songs and things. And I think he spent more time programming the fall uh, than he did a lot of these obstacles. That's just the, the, you know, my amateur opinion from observing this little, the little bit of this game that I've seen, you know. W what do I really know? Ugh. Uh. Come on, come on. All right. Come on now. And boom. I have trouble with this uh, portion. And I watch people do it, and I know there's there's a trick to it. Like, if you do it enough times, you can get the muscle memory down. But this has been a separator. All right, Ben. Chill. We got this. All right. Come on, man. Come on, man. So I even looked this up, and what the guides will tell you to do is position yourself on the bottom, shoot yourself upwards, and before you reach that first light, you've got to pull the hammer up above you so that you can catch it. That's what, on paper, guides will tell you to do. When I see people play it, I often don't see them use that technique, but... Oh, we're going to go down again. Sorry, Ben. Love you, brother. Again, I don't believe this game is about the climb at all. I think it's about the fall. Uh, <sighs> it's a stupid game. It's a stupid game. But this is not a stupid guy. This is a guy who thinks about things, who does things for a reason, and, and wants to say things. You know? And that's why I've come back to it. Because this... I'm not going to lie, before I made the decision to reinstall this a couple days ago, this was on my hidden games list on Steam. Like, you know how when you want to forget a game exists and just kind of remove it from your collection, you right-click right, right -click on it and you do hide this game? At one point, uh, not too long ago actually, I went through everything and I hid about 400 games. And after I did that, just all of the ridiculous noise that I never really ever wanted to play. Thanks, Ben. 
You're all heart. <laughs> uh, Steam got a lot more fun to play. It got a lot more fun to play with and, and like look through my games collection. I had an easier time when I didn't know what to play. I then had an easier time finding something just because. Um, this thing that we call failure is not the falling down, but the sustaining. Ain't that the truth? And when I did that, when I did the mass hiding, this was this was a game that did not make the cut. How long do I have in this game anyway? Five hours total? I didn't think it was that much. Mm. I also have this this game to thank for exposing me to the song Going Down the Road Feeling Bad. There it is. This is an awesome song. I just want to take it in. Come on now. Such a good song. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I hate you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. Yes. All right, here we go. Nope. Come on. No one where the weather suits my clothes. I want to make a cassette tape of the soundtrack to this game because I've always loved it. It's so good. Come on. All right, come on, we're gonna try this again. Cliff Carlisle sang that. If you look up Going Down the Road Feeling Bad on YouTube, there's many, many different versions. Um, another really, really good one is, um, oh, what's that guy's name? They sang Flip, Flop, and Fly. <sighs> Shoot, I'm so sorry, I can't think of his name. It's two people. It'll get back to me. It'll come back to me. But that's there's at least three or four different like excellent, excellent versions of that song on YouTube that are all really good. Uh, uh, uh. Over on Reddit, the uh, Cassette Culture subreddit, which I haven't been to in a while. I used to really, really love that place. Um, people would make, you know, people make mixtapes. It's a thing if you're if you're of my age group. Um, <laughs> and some people these days, you know, with the technology we have, they put that technology to work and they make really cool looking mixtapes. Oops. The soul would have no rainbow had the eyes been tears. John Barry's chain. And I, I always thought that this was a game that was deserving of a really good mixtape. Because you have the early American uh, folk music, early American country music, which, by the way, 
early American country music is incredible. It's incredible. Not country music as like today, like today's country music. Um, but that, like go back to that Cliff Carlisle track and it's, it's just a guitar and just a harmonica and, and, and that's it. And th there might be a bass in the background. There might not be, but you talk about like raw, that, that is a raw sound. Um, I, I love that. So you would have that on one side and then you'd flip it over and then you'd have the jazz, right? Cause there's, a, there's a distinct jazz track that plays as well. And then it would cap off with at, at the very end of the game, um, Bennett Foddy sings going down the road, feeling bad himself. And he sings like a weird version about a cauldron <clears throat> and that, that would cap off the experience. I think musically, this is a better game than, than it is a, a game, but that's just me. That's just me and my hipster nonsense, which I don't know. I think everybody's entitled to a little hipster nonsense sometimes. All right. And up we go. And that didn't go well. One thing I've never been able to do it with this game is he talks about, I'll save your progress. Just find a nice safe spot and then, you know, quit the game. I've never done that. I always play until... I end up at the bottom and I just can't and I just can't and that's why I like like this right here excuse me conventional logic would predict that this is probably the best place to stop because next time I play I can come here I can try this like little light post section whatever you want to call it um, and there you go I couldn't do it for two reasons one because I just worked to get up here I want to give it a shot and second because the next time when I play um, I will start here, drop to the bottom right away, and not have it in me to go back to the top. I'll go from ready to play to super frustrated in like 10 seconds. And that, ha that has happened once. Uh, so like, I think at this point, I would rather just have a really bad turn of events and go all the way to the bottom now than try and stop here where it's safe. And I think that... I look at this game that way because I've never been successful enough to get far enough for it to matter. I, I don't know how much of this I can really uh, film because one thing that I don't really do here on Tiger Claw TV, I don't edit. I can't, I can't edit. You know, I got three kids, I got a job, um, and I'm hosting a podcast. If I'm going to make a video, it's just, it, it's just, it, it is what it is. It's just us hanging out now. So, and <laughs> I couldn't do a complete let's play of this game. It would be like a 400 hour let's play. The pain I feel now there is you go. the happiness I had before. That's the deal. C.S. Lewis. Hmm. C.S. Lewis. The old screw tape letters. Uh, every time I'm falling, I try and get the hammer out to the right, and then I drag the mouse downward to, so that he'll stay in this position, hoping to catch something on the way down. It never really works out, but that's been my strategy for as long as I can remember. All right. We are going down the road feeling bad, that's for sure. That's that, that's like the ultimate working man song. Come on, man. Come on, man. What's the secret code? Is there a, can, can I IDDQD my way up? Sounds like the Vincent Garaldi trio. Is that Vincent Garaldi? You know, Linus and Lucy. Da, 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 da. Or is it because I'm uncultured, I think all piano jazz sounds like Charlie Brown? Come on.
Now nah, we're getting some success. I like the sound of the wind. I cannot now believe that you will ever feel better. But this is not true. You're sure to be happy again. And knowing this, truly believing it, will make you less miserable now. Abraham Lincoln. That is really true. I hear a lot of the, the, uh, the, the uh, people who are making Let's Plays of this early on. I hate the poetry. I, can we make him stop talking? How do we make him stop talking? I like that part. Because I think that's the part of the game that really like solidifies this as a game that's trying to do something, you know? It's trying to trying to say something at least. Even if what it's trying to say is just a great big giant middle finger to the people playing it, that's something. <laughs> you know? Uh it's not anything nice, but by by goodness it's something. Alright, let's try. Yep. And yep. Poor me. I would encourage anybody who's interested in this kind of music to head over to archive.org because there's a lot of this stuff just there for you to, to check out and then just enjoy the history and the culture. Nice one. Yeah, look at that. See? Let's just enjoy that moment. bit but not too much and you got to watch that because otherwise you go up and over yes beautiful and here we are doesn't he specify at some point that the man in the pot is actually supposed to be diogenes want to hear the end of the song no no love it. Isn't that awesome? All right, here we go. Come on now. Come on now. All right. I've made it. So this is where we're going to stop because I want to test that theory. And we'll do this one more time. Again, 
I'm not going to play all the way through this game because, first of all, you can see it done by better channels, uh, <laughs> you know. But I did kind of want to explore, uh, you know, a, a little bit about uh, what was being said or what was being done with this game because I think there's there's a little bit more here than just lol rage meme type game. A little bit more. Not much more, maybe, but a little bit more. So uh, that's it. It uh, this is, as far as I know, I think this game is still ten bucks. Actually, you know what? Let's check that out now. Um, quit. Yeah. Store page. It went down a little bit. It's eight dollars now. It used to be ten. Why was it ten dollars? <laughs> Jeez. <sighs> Epilepsy warning contains some surprising elements. I guess that's true. Feel new types of frustration you didn't know you were capable of. Lose all your progress over and over. Yes, that's true. That's true. I will buy a new game <laughs> for the money. Okay. Oh, that's one of my friends. That's Russ. <laughs> That's the guy who got me the game. How much did you put into this game, dude? Does it tell me? No. Oh, well. All right, boys and girls. That's all I got for this time. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.